controlled who the stars of this field were, mm -hmm. because by giving them manuscripts and so on, they could make a young scholar into an instant su superstar. Mm -hmm. So they controlled the mm -hmm. academic chairs, they controlled the publishing processes, and that's why over the last 30, 40 years, when a go-slow policy was put into, into place, since they had a mainly clerical viewpoint, a viewpoint mainly coming from Orthodox Christian uh, standards, mm -hmm. uh, the theory we had was a theory that was convenient for that point of view. Yeah, but you're talking about very sensitive times and issues. Very you're sensitive. You're talking about, I guess, it was sort of a library that documented historical and theological events that took place mm -hmm. during uh, the inception of founding Skelto fibers of Christianity. Yeah, well, the thing is that the uh, reigning theory tried or was in the process of pushing this material back earlier. Mm -hmm. So the materials were presented to the public as forerunners of what, of what Christianity uh, was and became. Mm -hmm. uh, the scrolls you see don't resemble Christianity as we know it. Mm -hmm. There's, they are permeated, chock full of concepts that are familiar in Christianity. Uh, concepts like, uh, well, uh, an outright messianism, uh, Holy Spirit baptism, justification, justification by works, things of that kind that are very familiar. But the scrolls represent the 180 degree inversion of Christianity as we know it. So if you were a person from a clerical background or an orthodox uh, theological mindset, you would not be able to see Christianity in these documents as mm -hmm. you knew it. Mm -hmm.